A magical Cirque Christmas is coming to Hammonds Hall just in time to get you in the holiday spirit. And joining me now is star of the show, Carissa Hendricks. Carissa, how are you? Oh, I'm so well. I'm so excited to be talking to you. Well, I'm excited to talk to you. So let's start with this. Just tell me a brief rundown of what exactly a magical Cirque Christmas is and what people can expect when they come and see it. Sure. So we had the opportunity with the show during the pandemic and the worst part of the pandemic to write a new holiday fairy tale uh, that would reflect kind of where we are in culture right now. We know that for a lot of people last year and this year with this show, our show would be the first time families are coming back to the theater. And so we wanted to honor that and how important that was. And we really wanted to create a show where the, the journey of the show is the beginning of the feeling of Christmas. And we mm. recognize that early in the pandemic, it just didn't feel like the holiday season. And so the show's kind of about that. The guardian of time, who's, his job is to turn the clock that starts the Christmas season. You know, that first day you feel snow on your nose or you smell candy canes and it feels like Christmas. That's because that's the day he turned the key to start the season. And this year <laughs> he's just not feeling it. So he's not mm -hmm. gonna do it. Luckily, the clock has a fail safe, which is Lucy Darling. She magically appears. So you get like a really beautiful magical appearance. Uh, we've like woven in lots of like little magic tricks throughout the show, which is really fun. Mm -hmm. And then she's there to cheer him up. And over the course of the show, she's trying to cheer him up, but she's really making a lot of mistakes because she misunderstands what the real problem is. And mm -hmm. so it's a, sort of a really fun comedy of errors. And we use that as a lovely tool to do a couple of things. One, to showcase some of the most incredible circus talent you have ever seen. Genuinely stuff that I didn't even know was possible as a show. <laughs> I'm on the side of the show. I'm on the side of the stage. Every show. We've done like 30 shows now. I'm on the side of the stage with my fingers crossed. It's, it's <laughs> the most intense stuff I've ever seen. And then also because with a lot of Christmas shows, one of the things we recognized is that it's a lot of Christmas music and sometimes it can be a little, a little like we, it's all the same songs we've heard at the mall. And, you know, mm -hmm. so we thought, okay, one, we're going to pick some of the best Christmas songs that are like really going to get people excited, stuff that people can sing along to or stuff that's a little offbeat. And we're also going to put them in their proper context. So once Lucy hurts the clock, it's end us spiraling through time. So you get a 50s scene and you get a 70s scene. And so you get to enjoy these Christmas songs. Really fun, nostalgic context. So the show is sort of like a little bit jukebox musical, a little bit time travel sci-fi, uh, very unusual, very um, ambitious for <laughs> Christmas yeah. show. We were having so much fun. <laughs> I love that. I love that. All right. So let's dive into those things, uh, a few of those things a little bit more. So tell me about your role as Lucy Darling and then also kind of just your overall overall involvement with um, Assert Christmas. Sure. So uh, Lucy Darling is a magic character I created about five years ago in Australia. And it's an old timey sort of vaudeville vamp, old Hollywood sort of thing. Um, and it came from, I love old Hollywood movies. I love, uh, you know, What a Way to Go and all these like old, wonderful movies. And a few years ago when Zsa Zsa Gabor passed away, I was really upset and I didn't know why because I didn't know her, but it, I realized with some soul searching that that's because for me, it felt like she was the last of those women. And so I created this character to to feature and to be like a love letter to those kinds of women uh, and wrote this whole like went to an accent coach and worked on the, the whole vibe and built whole costumes and, you know, hired a drag queen to help me work on it. And uh, it really came together and it's been very successful for me. It, it sort of put me on the map. And when they were looking to retool the show, they always have a magician host the show the two years that it existed before me. And they had seen the Lucy Darling online show for Christmas and a few other things I had done and realized what a good fit it would be because we could have this really interesting character that sort of carries the narrative throughout the show. So it kind of feels like you're, you know, you're really there witnessing her universe, like it's a little bit in her aesthetic, um, but also it's, you know, all over the place, nostalgic, really crazy, beautiful, lots of insane costumes uh so it's yeah it's been really fun like her aesthetic is a jumping off pier a point and then we we go all over the place yeah yeah well that sounds really interesting and i love the full backstory you know of bringing kind of your own inspiration to this new character um on, on the stage so that's awesome so all right tell me this too so you alluded to this as well earlier um really big moves and stunts and illusions in this show so tell me some of those maybe describe some of those to me what the audience can expect from that part of it Sure. So we have one of the best 
unicycle, bicycle, dual wax I have ever seen. Uh, I don't want to give too much away, but you will not be able to breathe the whole time. We have inc an incredible juggler who comes from a, a circus family. So he's been doing it. Like we watched videos of him doing it when he was like six years old. Like he has been doing this his entire life. We have a contortionist who does she's the only person in the world doing aerial contortion archery so you know those people who like shoot arrows with their feet mm -hmm. she is the only person in the world who can do it suspended from the ceiling it's hmm. devastating absolutely <laughs> devastating and then we have uh audrey who is an incredible vocalist uh when she's not with us she's you know working at the disney parks like unbelievable voice <laughs> and she gets to sing a lot of these songs live and to see the range that she has is incredible we have an amazing hula hoop artist who also does our aerial pole which is fabulous lots of amazing like acrobats doing duo partner acrobat routines it's really really nicely put together like really great lira really great sear wheel super super fun the, the nice thing about the show too is there's so much variety you know mm -hmm. we've got our duo straps and the guy from the duo straps is also doing diabolo so you get to see this it's a very small cast including me and the singer it's only 12 people oh wow but everyone's doing at least two acts. So it's really these people who have multi-talented, multidisciplinary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I coughed. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is incredible. And I feel like it just makes the show so high energy and leaves you, um, you know, really on the edge of your seat, which is what people want when they come and see a live performance. So tell me this as well, okay? Would you say this show is family friendly and will kids find it both interesting and fun? That was a big goal for us when we created it, is that we wanted a show that was a strong family show that you could bring a six-year-old to, and it would completely hold his attention, and he would totally follow the storyline. But if you were a couple going on a date, you wouldn't feel like the show was talking down to you. And mm. we really, we worked so hard to thread that needle, and I really think we have. I'm, I, we, I look at the reviews, and I get these emails from people who are there on a date night and have the best time. And also, I can look into the audience and see four, five, and six-year-olds on the edge of their seat so it's bright and colorful and like the music everything is designed to really like hold the interest of the kids and obviously it's very family friendly in terms of content but we have done that thing that you know um sesame street does where there's some coded jokes for the grown-ups right like the kids <laughs> will get it you're fine but yeah. there's a couple little things in there that you know and the show in my opinion works very hard to never talk down to you it's mm. it never feels like a kid show it feels really like it's designed for families and it's high end and really nicely put together and it looks like a little expensive. <laughs> well, that sounds super enjoyable for everyone and you know, for everyone all ages. So that's great. That's great. All right. Well, Carissa, thank you so much for chatting with me. Super excited for the show to come to Hammond's Hall. For all of our viewers, get out there, get your tickets, Hammond's Hall.com and Carissa, best of luck.